so the first one is going to be my Billy of the Week. A million dollars isn't cool. You know what's cool? A billion dollars. Do you know about a certain man named Gotham Adani? Have you ever heard this name before? Uh, mm, I don't remember. Okay. What, what's his shtick? So what's, Adani what's, what's just became, this guy just became the third richest man in the world. And so you Yes, have, the Indian guy from, uh, uh, he's kind of like a, a, and he owns like the huge mansion in, down, in downtown like Mumbai where it, like it, it's like a skyscraper. Yeah. So he, uh, so he, Elon Musk, number one, Jeff Bezos, number two, and now Adani, number three. And so people, they watch this list and they're like, who's, who is Adani? And I actually, I don't know if I met him, but we definitely pitched him. I, I think my dad pitched him a, a business thing many years ago. My dad always kept saying, oh, we just need to get Adani on board. Adani, Adani, Adani. And so I'd heard about this guy before and I didn't, you know, and his net worth is just skyrocketed because his stock is up like 13 X in the last, I don't is know. Is this Reliant before. Industries? No. So Reliance, it was the top kind of like company there. And the guy who runs it, Mukesh Ambani was the, I think he was, he was the richest man in India. And now Adani has passed him up in the last year because his Got stock it. went up 13 X. So, so who is this guy and what does he do? Okay. So, um, what he does, you'll, you'll appreciate this. Is he a software guy? Is he a Mark Zuckerberg? No, no, he's not. Is he Elon Musk? Is he trying to create the future of, uh, you know, space travel and, you know, like brain computer interfaces? No, this guy operates at a place that Sam likes power. So he does coal <laughs> ports plastics, you know, shit like that. So basically this guy's like, they do, they do like industrial work. And so he owns when, so when he was a, he was a kid, he was in school. He went to go visit this port. It was the largest port in the country at the time, a port, you know, where literally like ships come in and out. And, um, he's like inspired by it. It was like, one day I'm going to own the biggest port ever. And the biggest port in India. And now he's sure enough, he owns the biggest port in India. He owns the most ports in India too. Um, when, with the deal we were trying to do with him, we were trying to get Adani to come to Australia to build a port for our, our startup that was based in Australia, because these guys were the kings of ports. But his story is pretty cool. He's a he's a college dropout, so 18 drops out. He becomes a diamond sorter. I don't even know what that means, but he became a diamond sorter. He got an interest interest in the diamond business. And after a couple of years of sorting diamonds, he then goes in, he starts his own diamond brokerage. And he's like, I will trade, I will basically age of 20 as a diamond broker. Brother calls him up. Brother says, hey, brother, I have a, uh, a small plastic factory here that I, I, I own now. I've, I've, I bought or I run. And so he helps him go scale up the plastic factory. And then as he's doing that, he's like, oh, well, let's start importing the, like, the, the materials that come up, you know, upstream of plastics. And so he starts... Doing, he creates like a, an export company. And so he just keeps creating these companies. So now he has seven publicly listed companies. He's got the Adani Group, which is like the, the mega one. And then they'll start like Adani Power, Adani, um, you know, like trading, Adani um, Real Estate or whatever. And they'll start all these different companies. And they'll take them all public. And what's interesting about it is that. And he's got a beautiful mustache, by the way. Just yeah, he looks stash. like, you know, the meme account, Dr. Park Patel, he looks like the meme accounts photo, actually. So I don't know if it's if it's him or it just looks a lot like him. He looks that's... like uh, like an Indian Mario, you know, like Mario <laughs> and Luigi. He looks like an Indian Mario, like, you know, he, look, he does. He, you know, when Mario does that little squat, like, right, you know, when you want to you want to do that trick where you go behind the thing you're standing on and you run and you get the magic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like squatting. He's a little squatty, squatty version of, of Indian Mario. So anyways, this guy has now become, you know, whatever the third person. He's got these crazy stories. He was, I don't know if you know, there was like this um, sort of like an Indian 9-11 thing where there's like a terrorist attack on a hotel. He was in that hotel. At, on, he was like in the hostage group that was there. Wow. He was also kidnapped at one point in time and taken ransom for $2 million. They paid it and got free. And so this guy has just lived this like kind of crazy life. And even now he's doing really well. The group's doing really well. He's third richest man on earth. There is a set of people who are very, very skeptical about what these guys are doing because they have so much debt in their companies. Like he is basically constantly trying to acquire companies. Like they just bought the largest cement producer in India, but they buy these companies using debt. And he's got this intricate 
like set of companies. And so there's a big question of like, is this all a house of cards that's going to fall over? And you're going to see a guy go from the number three richest to like, you know, falling off the list completely. Or is he actually going to pull this off? Because what they'll do is they'll say, okay, the, the, the parent company has some profits. We'll take a loan on that. And then they take like one of the new companies public, like, oh, Adani Green Power. And they'll take the green company public because it's got the Adani name, stock price goes up. And then he'll invest in it from the parent company and then he'll sell those shares and then he'll borrow against the, the, the stock and then he'll issue a bond. And he's got like all these different debt instruments. And so they have, I think, more debt than like any other company in India. And now there's a question of, is this all going to fall over or is it all going to work? It's pretty fascinating. Dude, when, do, do you ever feel, I feel self-conscious when I hear about these things because my, like, my thing with business is like just the very simple of buy low, sell high, you know, like I purchase a widget for, you know, $1 and I put some type of value or I just buy tons of them. And, I, and so I get a discount and then I sell them for like $1.50 and that 50 cents is my profit. I use a quarter, to, a quarter of that to pay myself a quarter to go buy more. <laughs> and like it's like a relatively like simple, straightforward process. And then I hear about like you just use the word debt instruments and how he, you know, he like he does this thing and gets a loan across this thing and this thing. And when I hear that stuff, I just think like, so like, where's the dollar that goes into his bank account actually come from? You know what I mean? Like, right. Like I, I try to think about I'm like. I don't understand how this person then eventually collects the money and how the people who are owed money, where they got the money from and when they're going to get paid back. Like, do you know what I mean? It, it's like, it's so complicated for me because I'm such a simpleton or is it just bullshit? Dude, I don't think it's I was bullshit. in seventh grade. My parents got me a piano teacher and I wish that instead I just learned how to play dead instruments. Like that would have just been so much better than learning how to play, you know, what do you mean a debt? Oh, debt. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, where do people yeah. learn this stuff? Where do people learn this sort of financial engineering? I think that a lot of it happens if you're like on the inside. So you work at an investment bank or you work somewhere there, but like this guy didn't, but have this guy that didn't background. do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think he hired people who, who do that and they sort of shit say, Hey, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to issue this bond and we're going to take this company public and then we're going to like take a load, pledge the shares. And we're going to get a loan against the shares. And basically somehow $1 of EBITDA has become $8 of, you know, cash flow for us. And like, we got to figure out how to do that without it all collapsing. But people like when, who when, understand when, financial when, engineering, they have such an edge, such an such absolute an edge. edge. But when I like originally like made some money and I remember like our banker saying like, yeah, you can borrow money now at 1%. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to go into debt. And, and they'd be like, well, no, sometimes it's like it could be wise for you to do that. For example, if you have to pay taxes, I'm like, why? He goes, well, because you'd have to sell this thing, which then you'd take a, like a, you know, a 40 percent discount on that because of taxes. And I'm like, wait, I don't understand this. Can you like lay this out? Like, can you write this on a piece of paper? So like it and then my banker, Griffin, he ended up flying to New York to visit me <laughs> to like he goes, dude, I just need to sit down with you so you understand this. I swear to God. I swear. I go, why are you coming here? You got meetings? He goes, no, I'm coming to explain this to you. <laughs> so he came and he explained it to me. And He's I, like, it, yeah, sure. Meetings. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've cleared like, my I, day to explain the one concept of borrowing against stock. <laughs> like, he, I just didn't understand it. Were you the same way? Were you like, I just don't get this. I, this doesn't make sense to no, me. No, because where's this? Y y you and others explained it to me, right? So like, yes, it's true. I didn't understand. I didn't know about it at first. And then when I knew about it, I didn't understand why it was good. And then somebody's like, hey, so you notice why this is amazing, right? You could either sell your stock, pay taxes, and no longer own the stock. Or you could keep owning the stock never pay the taxes, just borrow at a 1% rate against that money. And like, you're good. And I was like, okay, so that's good, right? They're like, all right, you dipshit. You didn't understand? Like, <laughs> let's do this again. Dude, <laughs> and they it's like, crazy. show the numbers. Yeah, I just like, so these financial engineers, you know where I learned a lot about this stuff is from Ben, our Ben Wilson, his uh, podcast with Rothschild, like, I, and like I started like learning about this a little bit, but then I also learned that I think some people, I don't know like what skill set it is. I do think it's rooted in just like they're just good at math and they understand um, just like complicated algebra, to be honest, just like exponential, exponential. Like that, 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 that's a concept that's like it sounds like I'm joking, but that's actually quite hard to understand, like to understand what is 7 percent or 10 percent or 12 percent growth for 50 periods. What's that actually look like? Like. I remember listening to this podcast. I was like, oh, you're just like, just like LeBron, it's just taller and can dunk better. 
it doesn't matter what I do. Like there's some people that are just better at this. And I don't know what that skill set is, but there is something there there. It's like, you're just, you're better than me. Well, I think you just get curious about that thing, which most of us who are like builders, makers, entrepreneurs, you know, like the stereotype about, let's say, um, you know, who cares what, you know, corporate structure, uh, bookkeeping taxes, like, you know, whatever raising debt. That wasn't never the reason I got into business. That's not what I found interesting at the time. I was like you, it's like, Oh, we could buy this thing for X and sell it for Y, you know, that that's, that's the game plan. Or we can make this thing that doesn't exist. And wow, look how cool it is. Look how it works. That was always more fun. And it's just like a level up a progression in the game to be able to understand how do I a keep more money that I make and B, how do we leverage money so that we could do more interesting things, you know, in a less dilutive way. So, right. so I, I think these people are amazing, you know, like Xavier who, who runs enduring ventures. He told me this once he's just, he was just like, you know, if I died, I'd be reincarnated as a CFO, not a CEO. And I That's was like, so funny. it was like the weirdest brag I'd ever heard. I was, I never heard somebody like bragging about wanting to be a CFO. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, I don't know. I just really like learning about how to be efficient and smart on this, like financial, like financial engineering. And he had done, you know, real engineering before that he built basically like He's like, so he built a solar company in, in Africa, the largest solar company in Africa. Dude, that's so funny that he's interested and, in that stuff though. And because batteries like he comes off, he's like a hippie. He's, to he's totally a hippie, right? He, he did that because he's like, dude, there's people suffering in Africa. Like I wanna, like, that seems like the problem to go fix. But then along the way, he's like, all right, well, how do I create, you know, how do I finance all of these solar panels and battery packs without having to go raise venture capital. And so in order to do that, like the necessary evil was he needed to learn how to access cheap debt. He needed to learn how to like issue debt and underwrite for other people. Because what he did was he was like, you know, these people should basically, they don't have the $21 to buy the solar panel that goes on top of their house. That's going to power their fridge. And like, if they don't have a fridge, their life really is tough and they need this, but they can't afford the $21. So like, let's just do it at $4 a month or whatever. And like, I will underwrite a loan against their like income. And it's like, how do you underwrite a loan for somebody who doesn't even have electricity in their house? And he would figure these things out. And so I think it became a necessary evil and something he got fascinated with. And so now they're doing this hold holding company. And so he does this, this one thread he did went viral, which was like how to have a holding company like Warren Buffett and basically like, you know, make a massive amount of money, pay as little taxes you need to. And like, you know, have, have more and more money to do acquisitions as you go. And he basically outlines Warren Buffett's corporate structure and why that's at why that's advantageous. And, uh, you know, I read it and I still only understand 25% of it, but I'm just glad that there's people like that that I can go to whenever I have a question. That's hilarious. About this stuff. Dude, that's great. Well, I like this guy. Got him. I'm going to I want to learn more about him. You have more on him yeah. or you want me to go? Uh, I have another person like this or another person and idea like this. OK, so now okay. let's switch gears.